the biggest culture shift that I've seen um, is that students step up in big ways. Like we just ask them to lead people who are leading people who are leading people and they do it. By the time we started the chapter growth strategy at UMD, I had been on staff for a couple years already uh, and felt somewhat competent in my job, although I uh, could not have ever told you why a chapter grows and why it doesn't grow. And so I think we were gonna grow anyway, but we would have grown incrementally and I would never have been able to tell you why. Well, when I came into InterVarsity, uh, we had about 25 to 30 students that were kind of actively involved in what was going on day to day. And I would say that these students definitely had a desire to see their campus renewed, uh, but we didn't necessarily know how to do that. And we kind of plateaued in our ability to, to grow or to see the new things started on campus. And students really easily bought into the, both the, the where and the how of the strategy. But honestly, the, the culture wasn't a culture of growth. It wasn't a culture of learning. And it was at Urbana in the midst of having a somewhat successful semester and being at a place where we were learning more about God's heart for the world that I think we started kind of sensing as a group that, man, God has a heart for the world and we have a piece of that world on our campus. What would it look like to, to engage and to venture further into the depths of what we've ever had before? Uh, and we had a meeting with, with Doug Schaup um, where he talked about apprenticeship and just said, as long as someone's willing and ready to be coached, like let them lead a small group. Um, even if they're really new to faith, even if they're not sure how they feel about InterVarsity, if they're willing to reach out to their friends, give them resources. And so we jumped from three small groups to I think 17 small groups. Um, and so that changed everything, you know, because all of their friends would come, so we all of a sudden had, you know, 70 new people. We toyed around with a lot of different ways of running the student apprenticeship, but the thing that has made the apprenticeship work is coaching. Coaching at UMD is really multiple leaders gathering together in this collaborative venture to all learn from each other. Brian Asker, my supervisor, moved from being a supervisor into being like a player coach. And so he would show up on campus, he would actually observe me doing my staff work, and then he would, he would just call a timeout and we'd begin debriefing uh, the work that I was doing. And that was really uncomfortable at first. Coaching is hard, and it was through chapter growth when I got to see the transparency of all the way down the leadership pathway, from an area director to a staff worker, all the way down to an apprentice, I got to see what it looks like to be coached. And that vulnerability and that transparency actually um, gave me such a vision for what it looked like to step into leadership as, as a student and then someday as a staff. Uh, to be able to watch my, my coach, Luke, um, kind of get coached by Brian and, and to be able to see, oh, these are the things that he did well, these are the things he didn't do well. Well, how does that apply to me? So we had a lot of people that um, had jobs, had roles within the chapter, but once we switched to, okay, who are you going to lead? Who are you going to develop? Uh, that was hard because that was a lot harder work and it took a lot more vulnerability as a leader to be coached and to coach other people. Um, so there was some early pushback and we had a few people that said, I don't want to do this. But I think what I've learned is that any time that we do a huge momentum change or any time we try to implement something new, like it's just part, it's part of the process. And while it took us some time to really, like I said, gather language and vision all shared collectively in our group, uh, once we started getting to a point where that was becoming more and more of just an easy outflow of what we were naturally starting to do, that was when we really started kicking off in growth. I remember really having this moment that, um, where I was just struck by how much of God is in multiplying. And how everywhere in scripture you see Jesus multiplying and you see things um, expanding and growing. Things don't stay in one place in scripture. We got a lot more ambitious 
about we want to reach the entire campus. Uh, so during New Student Outreach, we want to get in touch with as many people as possible, follow all of them up, and then we want to plant as many new small groups as we can. Um, and so that's, that can be freshmen, that can be new Christians, but we give them a coach. And so we, we let them try, we let them fail, but there's someone with them. And so as soon as someone's ready, we just send out a new small group. So we went from a community that was mostly facing inward, just caring about each other, and then we turned into this community that is facing outward and always really thinking about who can we be reaching, who can we be better caring for. All of our student leaders have been convicted and been um, changed by that mission and that vision. And it's inspiring and it's compelling. So the chapter at University of Minnesota Duluth has grown significantly. We started with 48 students when we first started the growth strategy, and today we have 160 students involved. There are 32 campuses in my area. We have work on three of those. We're going to start to see more movement, more InterVarsity chapters planted on those other campuses. Basically, it's been the highlight of my college experience, um, of learning how to be a leader and helping others become leaders too. And because of this, I'm really excited to apply to be a staff member for InterVarsity. So I loved what was happening at UMD. I knew the people and uh, there were a lot of students involved. So coming to Scholastica, where there was only three students that I didn't really know, um, and there wasn't a thriving chapter here at all, um, was, was tough. Um, but I think what I found coming in and talking to these student leaders and just asking them, like, what do you want to see happen at Scholastica? Here's what I think could happen at Scholastica. And them getting excited about that, I realized, like, the same thing that's been happening over at UMD can happen here. It's not contingent upon, like, which school I'm at. Um, like, this mission and this vision uh, is a good thing to work for, and this strategy is working. I think a big reason why Chapter Growth Strategy worked on a student level was that students were invited kind of behind the curtain per se to seeing what was happening um, throughout this process. Uh, students were invited into being a part of writing curriculum, teaching, um, leading other things that primarily staff had done before. In that when I was empowering students to fill the most important roles and make them good at those things, all of a sudden everything worked great even if I wasn't there. And I think that's a huge win because it's not a chapter built around me as the staff or my who, who I am or some caricature of what a staff should be. It's really built around the vision and the mission. And it's powered by the students who are capable players in all the key roles. And I think that that was what really built a sense of trust and vulnerability, transparency. Uh, students knew exactly what was happening. Uh, we didn't have to wonder what our staff were asking us to do. Our staff were inviting us into that process with them. And we started seeing that as we were growing. The students have owned a vision of growth. Um, they, they want it to grow, they want more people to come to faith, they want more people to be involved in small groups, um, and they're unashamed of it. They say, we want, to, we want to grow, we want to be huge, because we think this is worthwhile and we think everyone should be in on it. I think one of the coolest things that I got to experience as a student leader in Chapter Growth Strategy was watching other students become leaders. Um, it really opened up our gates to who we asked and invited in to step into the leadership pathway. And by the time that I graduated, after four or three years watching this being implemented, I was amazed and overwhelmed at how many women and men I saw living out God's kingdom purposes through their leadership, through their self-sacrifice. Um, students that had walked in that never would have been claimed as a leader, but now we're functioning, I would say, almost as, as staff. We know we had a chapter full of staff level leaders, um, and I just think that, that that is such a testament to what Chapter Growth has allowed us to do in accessing um, God's heart for potential in all of His people. Yeah.